So um, I wanted to share to you a speech made by Jason Silva. And this one is uh, entitled Paradise Engineers. When you say paradise, it's a beautiful space, beautiful state that you want it to be in, the most beautiful, most grand you have ever thought of. And engineer, engineering is to create such space, create such state. And yeah, I wanted to share it to you just for uh, a very short while and here it goes. I think no one would argue that human beings are fundamentally hedonistic. In other words, we are wired for pleasure. We are wired to seek out experiences that reward us neurochemically and to shun experiences that bring us pain, suffering, or boredom. <laughs> it is said actually that boredom could lead into incidences of depression and anxiety and unstimulating subjectivity is a problem for human beings. Now, Jamie Wheel says that it's a fundamental miswiring of our nervous system. He says that our self-systems are like leaky buckets. They are like colanders. No matter how much pleasure we're getting, we're bleeding from our many holes. And most of us become bliss junkies. We get hooked on to the state without ever trying to raise the stage, which is why Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler propose. They propose actually transforming our self-systems from leaky buckets into chalices, right? So that we can render ourselves whole and maybe render ourselves holy. This kind of transhumanist approach to transforming ourselves, to become paradise engineers, to bliss ourselves out by transforming our fundamental wiring is seen as heretical by the Puritans. There's a great book called After the Ecstasy, the Laundry, which of course uses the rationalist argument that no matter how transcendental peak experiences are in our lives, it's to define what it's like to carve, to carve our North Star, we should nonetheless get comfortable with the after effect, with the calm down, after the ecstasy, the laundry, go back to fetching water and chopping wood. You know, I've always felt, what do you do after a mystical experience? What do you do after a cosmic orgasm? What do you do after becoming one with everything? Fetching water and chopping wood. And I guess what I'm saying is that I don't agree with that Puritan mindset that accepting that transcendence has to be temporary, that fundamental wiring requires us to come down from our bliss and grace and our highs. But I propose instead, akin to what dear Ben Pierce says of paradise engineering, of rewiring our hedonic set points and actually transforming subjectivity into engender that kind of godhood of mind, pleasures and paradises beyond anything we could ever imagine. So, after the ecstasy, more ecstasy. Ooh. So, uh, that was a speech made by Jason Silva and I'm really, I'm really fascinated by it because the thought that uh, staying in such, such paradise state is, is a difficult task. You know, we could be in that blissful junkie. One time we're doing a certain act and we are really, really into it. We're very passionate about doing something. But then after such, what happens? You know, we go back. It's a... Uh, we, we feel, we feel that the, the high was down, the high was over. But no, it's not. It's not real. It's a... Uh, more of it as uh, Jason Silva proposes. And I would really want to say that uh, it's supposed to be meant as such that we are meant to engineer our own paradise experience. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've done this uh, video a couple times already and it's, it's really hard, but uh, I love it. So I hope you love it and uh, maybe I'll be doing more of it sharing more of his words but eventually the reason i'm doing this one is because i want to assimilate his words i want to learn from him as well through saying what he says and maybe his thoughts would go into me just like reading a book but doing it in a 
a certain kind of presentation. Thank you.